Hey, is everybody fully awake and ready to go? Um, I'm excited uh, to introduce Mark Colbank here. Mark's with uh, State of North Carolina and he's going to talk about uh, some really front end awesomeness that um, that you've been working on Mark with uh, Bootstrap 5 and some of the uh, beautiful theming. So turn it over to you, Mark. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'll try to I'll pass out some coffee and to keep everybody awake this late in the afternoon. Um, really, this is going to be more of a high-level overview, uh, more than a technical deep dive of why we used uh, Bootstrap Barrio and you know, just some of the um, key features and some of the reasons and of why we used it as a uh, basis for a theme. You know, so my, yeah, I want to talk about some of the values of Barrio and Bootstrap, uh, you know, share a few key insights from our experience with it and some best practices. Uh, um, really, we aren't doing, we didn't do anything that would be really rocket science for this thing. We tried to keep things very standard practice, um, just because we have other developers on the team that we want pretty much anybody to be able to get in under the hood, you know, and be able to update things uh, and work with it. So you're not gonna see anything really spectacular here. And uh, just, so I'll have a, a little bit of time at, at the end for Q&A, uh, just for anything uh, that I didn't cover that you're interested in. Uh, and just as a disclaimer, I started this about a year ago, so there are a few things <laughs> that probably be a little fuzzy about uh, how did we do that? So uh, what, what I want to talk about today, first I want to tell us a little bit about the team, uh, myself and our platform. We'll, and I'll talk about why we chose Barrio, a little bit about the base theme, you know, as a starter, why, what it is, uh, some of the Bootstrap 5 features in particular, you know, I'll kind of go over how you install it, and then as a bonus at the end, uh, one of the really cool things that I like about Bootstrap 5 and that we were able to integrate into our platform was the SVG icon library, and kind of the way we implemented it, that's kind of a little bonus that, uh, that I think was a fun thing that we did. So a little bit about myself, uh, I've been a web developer since 1996, uh, been a federal, in the federal contract space for uh, much of the past 10 years, I worked on the NIHS mobile redesign in 2013, uh, did the National Toxicology Program mobile re redesign for that federal site in 2017, and began working for the state of North Carolina in 2020. Um, our team, uh, is the digital solutions platform team that basically looked at using Drupal 7 back in 2014 as a common platform for hosting many of the state agency websites. And so our team developed that platform with really with a minimal dependence on uh, outside vendors or expensive hosting providers uh, like Acquia, Pantheon, all the wonderful people hosting this conference, don't, don't tell them. But we're, we're entirely on AWS with a, you know, a custom developed platform. And Matt Clark uh, actually talked a lot about that in one of the earlier sessions today. He's a great guy. So over the past uh, three years, we've been migrating about 67 of the state agency websites from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 or Drupal 9 over the past three years, and we're just about done. <laughs> so we're excited about that. So the, this particular project was a redesign of the main uh, website for the state, nc.gov. And we really wanted to improve the user experience. Uh, and we, when I was looking at what we use for the theme, you know, our mobile first really was, of course, foremost. We're, our analytics are showing that 50, uh, upwards to 70% of all visitors to some of our sites are coming on a mobile device. You know, so. You know, that was very important. We also wanted some uh, platform framework that was very focused on accessibility. You know, that's a requirement for us as a government that, you know, that that's baked in. Uh, we wanted to improve our search. We really went to a landing page approach, uh, talking about chunking our data, you know, making it very scannable. And we wanted to highlight for citizens, you know, what was the most visited because this is a, a portal site that basically feeds off links to every other state agency website. You know, so we wanted to use landing pages really to highlight, 
and make it easy for people to find you know, the different things that they were looking for. So why we chose Barrio, um, you know, when we were, we had a theme that was uh, seven or eight years old. Uh, it had uh, some really old libraries, bourbon, and some, the compiling time was ending up being like two to three minutes every time we were rebuilding the SAS, <laughs> you know, when you were making changes, it was just getting very painful, and the deprecations of that we're just becoming bigger and bigger, and eventually it was going to come to bite us. So we, we wanted to do a complete ground-up rewrite of the theme. And I wanted to you know, choose a framework that would save us a lot of you know, development time. Just you know, We didn't have to develop a lot of components. So I looked for something that had really a lot of community support. And right now, if you search for uh, what is a Drupal 9 compatible, actively maintained theme, you're going to find Barrio comes up right after Ad Minimal, which is an admin theme. So it's actually the top used theme right now with 28,000 uh, installs. It has some really cool features like the color module, which I'll talk about, baked into it. Um, but the, some things to know about it, it's a base theme. You know, the, it's, it really is meant for you to build on top of it. It's, it's, it doesn't come with a lot out of the box. So it's really just a layout. But what it does do is it's basically overwriting all of the you know, core and classy uh, theme templates with all the bootstrap you know, styles and classes. So it really simplifies integrating Bootstrap 5 uh, SAS with Drupal and pretty much overrides every CSS and replaces it with Bootstrap CSS. Uh, there's a starter kit that's uh, available that you can use, which provides a gulp build uh, for Bootstrap 5. You know, so that's, you know, that's a sub-theme that you can use with it. In terms of Bootstrap 5, uh, you know, when I was looking at you know, modern frameworks, I've built previous sites with Foundation 6 when I did the NTP, and at the time, Bootstrap was, I think, on Bootstrap 3 and Bootstrap 4 wasn't out. So this time around, you know, I took a look, and Bootstrap 5 was coming out mid last year and was still in beta. So it was a little bit of a risk. <laughs> but, I, you know, our, our thought was, let's go with the latest and greatest, <laughs> you know, so we don't have to up update this later on. And uh, it actually turned out to be very painless. Uh, it worked great. We didn't run into any real gotchas with jumping on the bandwagon right out of the gate. Bootstrap 5 is developed by Twitter. It's used by Amazon and Apple. There's over 4 million websites out there that are using Bootstrap as a framework. For me, uh, there was Flexbox based. It was really important, uh, you know, just because of the, you know, you can really organize your content a lot more fluidly with Flexbox. Uh, the component library, you know, for us in particular, there were several components that I just didn't want to have to source out other libraries. Uh, I wanted everything in one package, so we needed a carousel, an accordion, the mobile navigation. It has 24 mobile optimized UI components. And another big factor was the SVG icon library, which is a really cool new feature with Bootstrap 5. And I'll talk a little bit about why that is cool. So let me, let me kind of walk through um, just creating a sub-theme. So when you install Barrio, you have a contrib theme, and then you, you want to create a sub-theme in your custom theme folder, which will basically build on top of you know, the, the contrib theme. And that's important because you want to be able to update you know, the, the base theme without having to break you know, all your custom styles that you've added or any custom scripts that you've added. So there's two ways that you can go about creating a sub-theme. Uh, there's a script, and by the way, I've got links here to two YouTube videos, um, which you, you can just watch, that will kind of walk you through that. Uh, if you go to my website, colbank.com slash barrio, which I'll have at the end, you know, you can, the links are right there in, a, in an article post, so that if you want to watch those, you can uh, find those links there. But there's a scripted approach where you can just, you know, on the command line, run the script and punch in your theme name, 
uh, and create it that way. Or you can manually create the sub theme just by going into the uh, sub theme folder that's inside of the Bootstrap Mario. You just copy that sub that folder out into your custom uh, theme folder, and then you just have to go through and manually change all the file names, you know, and some library names that are inside the files. So. Um, this video here walks through that. It's actually for Bootstrap 4, but it's basically the same thing for Bootstrap 5. Um, Webwash uh, did a video on that. You know, and then from there, in your sub theme folder, you're going to create you know, your custom CSS and JavaScript in that sub theme folder, which you know, over here, you know, you've got, uh, you probably can't see that real well. This, uh, any questions about just, you know, creating sub-themes, is that uh, pretty straight up on that? So just in terms of best practices and what we did, um, you know, just throw this out as a best practice, we modularized all the SAS, so, you know, just making sure that each of your components has its own SAS file and that that's all imported and compiled together, that's just the best practice. Uh, it just makes it very maintainable, you know, like when you're trying to find <laughs> where's the style for, you know, the accordion. You, know, you just go to the accordion SAS file and find it. Uh, and then that also, by modularizing things, it allows you to import the bootstrap variables. So, you know, when you put it all together, you can get the, the mix-ins, the topography, your variables all get imported at, at the top of your, your SAS build. You know, and then you have all of those mixins, you know, all those uh, breakpoints, variables you know, available to you throughout the rest of your code. And then after, you know, once you've got that set up, you know, the, the sub-theme shows up. You know, here you just install it in your appearance and you're good to go and then you start developing. So, once you're in, you have it installed, you have a lot of theme settings that you can really change without having to write any CSS at, you know, at all. Uh, when you get into the bootstrap settings, you can control things like you can choose your container, whether it's a fluid container, that, you know, full width, screen width, or it's constrained. Uh, you can set region classes. You can actually just put the classes in. Uh, for each region inside of the theme. You don't even have to touch the code to do that. You can decide in your grid setup, like you know, your sidebars, do you want them to be two column wide, three column wide? You can just configure all of that you know, from your, your theme settings. Where do you want to position your nav bar? You know, those, the, all these things are just settings inside of uh, Bootstrap. Uh, the font, what font family you want to you know, run inside there. Uh, you can even set uh, you know, loading the library, whether you want to load it from CDN or locally. Uh, that's, that's configurable from inside the bootstrap settings. And also your color scheme uh, and the whole color module is available in here. I've actually got the color module hidden <laughs> in this because we don't actually use it. But here is what the color module looks like. Anybody here from, use the color module in any of it? No, not recently, though. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Um, we didn't end up using it, and I'll explain why. But uh, the, you know, you can actually set all the colors here, and you can have some preset colors. There's a file that you can actually preset the colors in, so you can give people an option of uh, several presets. Part of the reason why we didn't want this in. We, we're, we're a multi-site platform where we have 67, 68 agencies. We actually didn't want to give people the power to go in here and, and just choose whatever colors they, they wanted because we figured that's, that's a little dangerous <laughs> unless somebody really, we have a designer on our team who's done a great job of, uh, you know, making sure everything's complementary and looks good together. So we've, we've set up several theme color choices that uh, our users can use. But it does, there's just tremendous power. One of the problems that we did run into with this though, because we're an AWS-based you know, hosting solution, what this 
does is it takes and it rewrites, it uses JavaScript and writes a file into your site's um, default files folder. And for us, we ran into some permission issues, you know, when I was writing there. We could have straight, we could have straightened that out and worked around it, but it ended up being simpler for us to just create a separate color file for each one and just attach it and load it. Um, so, and again, we also didn't want to open up a can of worms of getting giving people this kind of power. Another, <laughs> another thing is if, if you read the regions in the info in the file, you actually put it in the settings of the file. Yeah. Yeah, and that, the, other, the other thing that runs, this, this really just sets like the header, the footer, link color, button color, some real basic things. We actually wanted to color theme a lot more. We have components like call to action cards and band backgrounds and stuff like that. That we just would have had to, it would have taken a lot of customizing for this to, to work for that. So, but it is a really cool feature uh, and it's fully integrated with, with Barrio. Um, is that the same color module that they're dropping from core? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they're, I didn't realize that they're actually dropping that out of core. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So once you've got it installed, you know, just some of the things that we had to do. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the initial configurations that we had to do. Yeah, we had to adjust the regions that we were using in the info YAML file. Uh, for us, we had around a dozen content types and about 25 paragraph types that then we had to go through and create the tweak templates uh, and all the SAS for. Uh, the, again, the three components that I was most interested that I wanted to use was the carousel. We have a main slider on our homepage. Uh, we also have an alert banner, which uses the same carousel functionality. Um, something that was new with Bootstrap 5 was the accordion uh, paragraph type. So we were using accordions pretty heavily in our how-to content type. So, you know, just that nice functionality, being able to expand. Uh, and, of course, the biggest thing is just the mobile navigation, um, which, you know, is a lot of work to create a custom mobile navigation. Uh, I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> it, but just having it out of the box one to use was nice. One of the things that I don't like about the, this is the one big complaint that I have about Bootstrap and its component is that, that uh, the way the navigation works is this, the, the main drop down, you have to click it to open, but it's not a link itself. So you have to add the link to the actual page you want to link as a sub. Yeah, I really like the drill down. Uh, if anybody's familiar with the drill down, which Foundation I think has, where you have two click zones. You have a click zone for the link and a click zone for the drop down. You know, and so that that one part is we just I don't like having in your menu to have to create one menu item to open the menu and then a separate one to actually link to the to the page and and that's an issue for us because we had these pre-existing navigation menus that we're installing this theme on where people have already set it up yeah so my one complaint one my big issue that I had and then we also had to set up six color theme variations for our multi-site instance so when, when we went into the info YAML, this was part of the initial configuration. Yeah, we removed a couple of the regions, uh, repurposed a couple of the regions, yeah, set up a namespace for our for our templates, and then attached library. One of the libraries that we're using is there anybody. This is kind of a freebie. Editorially, is anybody familiar with that? If accessibility is a big issue for for you, uh, our designer has introduced us to editorially, which We'll do a check on the page, you know, when the, for the editors. Uh, it's just really nice. So it might be something that would be worth checking out. So, and then the bulk of our work at this point was really just going through the Twig templates, uh, you know, and making sure that we, you know, 
a lot of templates, you know, we could copy out a core, we just have to make sure we put in the bootstrap classes uh, or the data attributes if you're hooking up the JavaScript functionality. Um, or occasionally the, the, you just found the templates that were in Bootstrap Barrio and the contrib theme and would copy those out and write them over again, you know, and adding the CSS and styles and occasionally doing some JavaScript configuration. This is probably the third uh, Drupal site that I've done a complete, you know, rewrite from the ground up. I think the one thing I would do differently going forward is I think I would move away from using, you know, writing so many twig templates. I really like the component uh, uh, talk that was earlier today. And I think if I had to do this again, I would really try to minimize uh, how much custom twig template development that I would do and really try to develop a better component. Now, with this particular project, we were under the gun to get it out in about six months, so I wouldn't have had the real luxury to, to do a whole brand new approach to things. Um, but that's kind of one of my lesson takeaways that, yeah, I think I would try to get away from using Twig so much uh, in custom development on the templates. So um, here's my, uh, you know, my little bonus. Uh, this was the, probably the coolest thing that it, I think we got to do using Bootstrap 5. Uh, Bootstrap 5 introduces SVG icons and one of the, there's some real benefits to S, using SVG icons, uh, and they're much more accessible. You, you can add alt tags because they're not fonts. Um, alt, so you can add alt in different, easier to position, there's no anti-aliasing, you can even you know, do cut, put color styles on them. Uh, it, we had to use the SVG image field module in order to be able to load it up into the media library. Uh, but what we did is we created a separate, um, and, and also the, the other thing is that it, what it allows, and I'll get into the details of this, is that you can go to the Bootstrap site and you can find individual icons. You know, so if somebody wants a star icon and it's not available, you know, in the old days when icons were a, a library, you're just stuck with whatever's available, you know, in that font library. Uh, but now, if somebody finds an icon that they want, you know, they can just upload that individual SVG, you know, icon and have it available for them. And this has a, there's 1,600 icons available in the Bootstrap library. Um, so what we did is we just went in and created a new media content type called icon, uh, restricted that just to SVG, you know, a file type. Once the SVG image field, you know, modules installed, you know, that, that image field's available. And then that, what that allowed uh, users to be able to do was just upload, you know, icon straight into the media library. You filter it by the icon media type and suddenly they've got, you know, just their, their you know, we preloaded about 100 icons for them. Um, and then gave them the ability to be able to add their own icons and then, you know, it's just an image field on the Twig template for, like, the CTA cards that we're using. So, you know, they could just upload that image just like any other image and, you know, choose their own icons. So, you yeah, know, that was, that was kind of a cool little thing that Bootstrap 5 enabled us to, you know, introduce as a, you know, sort of a new user functionality. Do you know if that's available independently as part of the theme? Um... No, the the module is a, it's it's a different custom. It's not a part of the theme. We had to install, you know, the SVG, you know, the field image. But the Bootstrap SVGs is that a separate module? Or is that part of the theme? Um, no, I think you, we had to load up. We actually wrote a migration script, which because we were preloading 68 sites, we just used a simple migration script to run off a JSON file and just. Boom, we just <laughs> installed those in the media library, and I think we had to copy over you know, all the SVG files um, to do that. You could kind of copy what you've done with the field and with the custom SVG type. Yep. Right? Uh, the media type. Yep. And maybe kind of, even if they're different SVG 
that, that's a nice pattern, by the way. Yeah, it, I really, it, I thought it was a really nice, particularly for like one of our uh, agency sites is Parks and Recreation, you know, or Parks site. I don't think it's Parks and Recreation. That's a show. <laughs> That's a good show. <laughs> but uh, uh, they use icons heavily for you know, for their stuff. So, uh, anyways, it was fun. That that was something that Bootstrap Five made possible, which uh, we wouldn't have been able to do if we'd just gone Bootstrap Four. You know, one of the interesting things is I think the largest theme out there is still Bootstrap Three. Like there are so many people are still using Bootstrap three because that's a Drupal, you know, theme. Well, this this theme has thirty thousand sites. So yeah. Right now. It's up thirty thousand. It's yeah. twenty eight thousand when I was looking at yeah. it a few weeks ago. <laughs> that's pretty wild. Yeah. 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 So it, it's a, yeah. So kind of put the wrapper on it. Uh, you know. Yeah, our, our experience of using it as a base theme, we did not run into any real problems or issues uh, with implementing it. You know, it was a little fear and trepidation of jumping onto it early, but we rolled it out in January. You know, and it didn't run into any problems with using it. Uh, so, you know, again, if you want those links, uh, my site, uh, you can just go to Bootstrap uh, Barrio. Uh, it's my contact information, but let me open it up and see if there, anybody has any questions. I know. I was actually curious, uh, when you do that search for themes, I've used Bootstrap so much that I'm actually bored with it. Yeah. And what, what was number two? Was there, or was there another theme you looked at? Uh, no, no. Yeah, I, when I looked at it, I was mostly interested in the component library, and I just knew Bootstrap, you know, for me it came down to Bootstrap or Foundation because I'd used Foundation before, um, so I'd, I didn't really look at other ones. Uh, but Bootstrap was the most widely used. So, yeah. I think the magic on that, on that theme is the theme settings. Yeah. The amount of stuff you can get done in there is yeah, and we didn't end up using a lot of that because we were doing a complete design rewrite from scratch, so we just built everything up. I mean, I'd stayed away from Bootstrap in previous designs just because it was kind of rigid, but the nice thing about Barrio is it abstracts away. You don't have this Bootstrap looking, <laughs> you know, it's very flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta ask you this couple more, but... <laughs> So isn't Drupal Core is doing something with something, right? Like changing that the way they want you to with starter kits or something? Do you know anything about that? No, that's that's actually new. No, I haven't I haven't like seen how that. Your approach might change that. That's that's good to know. <laughs> I have to go and take a look at it. No, I basically I just when I saw the barrio to kind of your question, I was looking at what were the most widely used one. My concern really was was this going to continue to be supported? You know, were people going to be fixing issues on it? So I was looking for widely used ones. Um, but uh, yeah, I just basically followed their sub theme instruction guide. You know, there's a whole site. Uh, They've got a whole, in terms of sub theme, you know, there's their documentation on this is actually pretty good for uh, the barrio. It's there's a lot here, probably could be a little easier to understand, but yeah, their sub theme install was was pretty pretty easy. What? Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, or. Yeah. Which 
here we are. <laughs> Trying to drag off the wrong side of the screen. So, yeah, here's, yeah, here's the custom sub theme. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the documentation for creating the sub theme. I was just bringing this up because somebody was asking about the sub theme. I don't know how that's going to change. It'll be interesting to see how that changes once Drupal 10 comes out. But this was this was really easy to follow and use. So. Any other questions? Did, did you? Um, it sounds like that you you don't allow access to the appearance and the settings though for your site builders. Probably. I'm not, you know, that's a good question. I'm not sure what, we have, we have content editors and then we have web managers. So okay, like so every agency has a single, the web manager might have access yeah. to that. I imagine the content editors wouldn't, wouldn't be able to touch that. Yeah. So. I have a sort of, I'll, I'll make it sort of related. But when you, um, I'm just curious, like, um, if somebody, comes to your group and says, we want a new feature on our site. You know, is there, do y'all have like an intake process? Yeah. Um, yeah, we... How does it, because you're building for a platform, so right. you've got to probably be careful with how to govern that. Yeah, a lot of times we say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we're, we're trying to uh, keep things not customized site by site. We've got a couple instances where that's that's happened and it just turns into a nightmare of maintenance. But if somebody comes wanting a feature and we can see that that feature really would be a benefit to other people on the platform, you know, and we have the the time to add that feature in, you know, then we'll you know, we'll take it into a sprint and implement it. To so, make it something everybody can Yeah, basically. So we're we're continually rolling out more and more features, you know, and have our weekly or three, three week sprint where we have here's what we added to the platform in the last three weeks, <laughs> you know. So, so kind of, you know, it's like the SVG library was one of the ones we rolled out a month or two ago. So, it was a nice feature. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have a fantastic designer who did a great job on that. Yeah. I just implemented it on, <laughs> on Barrio. Any other questions? Well, I know we're kind of getting late in, uh, on Saturday, so kind of wrap it up. <laughs> Thanks for coming.